Well, the disaster unfolded, escalated really quickly, as you heard. This is all on Friday. And you look at the tri-state hour by hour, just before 2 a.m. in the pre-dawn hours, the National Weather Service issued that flash flood warning for Brooklyn and Queens. The rain intensity just picked up. By the 7 a.m. hour, everybody's in the commute. There's a critical alert. A flash flood warnings issued for New York City and Manhattan just before 8.30. And already five and a half inches of rain reported in Brooklyn by 9.15 a.m. 5.3 inches at Prospect Park. That was wild. 4.1 at JFK. During the commute, the water levels increased. And by 9.30 a.m., we had dangerous, life-threatening flooding in progress in New York City, and the subways began to shut down. At 10.15, New York Governor Kathy Hochul declares a state of emergency for New York City, Long Island, and Hudson Valley. And then by 11, that's when uh, the mayors of New York City, Hoboken, both declared states of emergency. They had seven-plus inches by 1 o'clock in some of these locations, including the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Mm -hmm. And then by 3 o'clock, water rescues were reported in Connecticut and Long Island. It was a wild Chain of events. Valley Stream out in Queens, 9.4 out on Long Island. JFK getting the 8.7 record rainfall. East Rockway, eight and a quarter. Uh, Belrose, 7.6, and Park Slope getting over seven and a half inches of rain. Really wild to look at all of the amounts of rain. Few of these did hit records. Yes. One other statistic that blew me out of the water is 150 of New York City's 1,400 schools had water damage. Wild. So maybe that's going to be one of the factors that goes into the threshold of that 30 million that's needed for federal disaster. It's, it's true. And keep in mind, when we look at New York as a whole, I mean, Manhattan was spared a good chunk of, of the heaviest rain. It was more so Brooklyn, Queens, where we saw it. That JFK stat was fascinating to me right? because the, the daily total was 8.15, but the storm total was 8.7. So it was mainly that 24-hour period where we picked up the majority of it and we're looking at radar image of uh, this event that narrow swath of some very heavy rain it set up initially over Brooklyn Queens and then it shifted farther to the east where some of those higher totals went in the other thing I want to mention too was the Bronx River at Friday morning the Bronx River reached major flood stage it remained in major flood stage until Saturday morning images along the Bronx River Parkway the the river Cross itself Bronx right there and man here Here's oh, the thing. A it is a it is a, a a thing that happens when we we get these levels. But I was looking at the the data at three feet when the Bronx River reaches that three feet threshold. That threshold. That's not even major flooding. The Bronx River Parkway begins to flood. It was up to five feet with this event, wow. and it lasted there. So we we had a portion of the of the. Uh, Parkway there and the Sawmill Parkway was also closed for several hours. Well, I remember you talking about the boundary setup. When we looked at the, at this uh, initial setup of the weather, you said if we get this boundary right over the area where we get the inflow coming off the Atlantic, this is where it's not going to be just a pocket or two, but there'll be a wide swath, and that's exactly what played out. Uh, Kiana, when you look at these totals, definitely other areas, inland New Jersey, did not get as much. There were still problems there. But the epic amounts of rain right here turn out to be legendary going down in the books. It really does. It's just off towards the east of, say, the East River, where we saw the heaviest of that rain really fall. We're talking about Brooklyn. We're talking about the Bronx. We're talking about Queens, an area or a borough, I should say, that holds both of the bigger international airports for New York City. JFK LaGuardia saw some of their wettest September uh, uh, ever on, on par. And we look at some of the records here between both of those airports and even Central Park, we saw some significant rain set up shop because of that one narrow band that moved in and really transitioned off towards the east. So looking at JFK, you saw the first wettest. You look over towards LaGuardia, the same. Um, Central Park, this is the second wettest, but it was still remarkable uh, well over where we should be. Yeah. Yeah. Not to be outdone, I think, by 1882. That yeah. was the wettest September, which also takes the spot for wow. uh, the wettest month in, in record. September's can be wet months. That's kind of what I had seen when you're looking mm -hmm. at the data in, in the Northeast. Especially I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.